Hi, it's Sherry from A Quilting Life, and today I have a fun little demonstration for you along with a free simple pin cushion pattern PDF that you can download. We're going to make a fun little pin cushion. There are a couple different options on the pattern, and I'm going to kind of walk you through that and show you a little bit of the step by step. And also, I'm going to give you some ideas for pin cushions that you might not have thought of before. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, let me just show you a few things. First of all, for this free pattern, it actually finishes up at four inches by six inches, you know, before it's stuffed. I have two different options for you. One of the options you can use one and a half inch by one and a half inch squares. And so you will need 12 of those. And that's what I've got laid out here. And I just kind of took some things from my scrap just to kind of lay out for you. I probably wouldn't put the two plaids together. But let's see, we can do something like that. Anyway, lay them out. Uh, the other option, as you can see here, is you can also, instead of the 12 one and a half inch by one and a half inch squares, you can use six one and a half inch by two and a half inch rectangles. So that's another option for you as well. You're also going to need a top piece, which for both of these pin cushions, I just did the little floral for this one. I thought it would be cute to have the plaid as well. And the first thing you're going to do is actually just sew these together and then sew them to this. And a piece of batting that you'll then put it on and use for your quilting. And I wanted to show you what I did. I, I For this one, I just did a quarter of an inch away from some of the seams here. And actually, I didn't even do this one. I could I could have probably done on both sides if I wanted a little bit more. It's really just up to you how much quilting you want to put into it. For these, I just used my quarter inch and I just did quarter inch stitching all the way across. I did lengthen my seam to a 3.5 for that. And on this one, pretty much the same thing. I added a little bit more because of the squares, but basically you just wanna do your quilting. Now, as far as the backing for your pin cushion, it just says on your pattern, it says a, a two and a half inch by four and a half inch rectangle and a four and a half inch square of wool, flannel, or other fabric for your backing. So, and this is kind of a new technique that I have really loved that I learned from my friend Christine. Her Instagram handle is pretty by hand. She is so incredibly talented. She has written beautiful books, designed fabric, gorgeous patterns, and she just has a real, just a genius way of putting things together. And so uh, when I used to make pin cushions, I would just make my back all one piece and I would sew my front to my back and I would leave an opening somewhere here in the side in the seam for stuffing and then stitch that together. Well, I learned from Christine that no, use two different pieces from your back, sew them together and leave the opening right here for your stuffing. That way, all of the edges of your pin cushion are solid and when you're sewing that seam, you're sewing it back here and it can be so much more invisible. It's not ever gonna cause anything to pucker funny on the side of the pin cushion. So I really, really love her idea. So that's why you have in your pattern the measurements for the two different pieces for your backing. Now, I, I do like wool backed, but sometimes, and this is some fig tree wool that I got for a couple of years ago. You'll notice that it, my seam doesn't look exactly straight. If you want to alleviate that, you can also quilt your the bottom of your of your pieces. And so for this, you would need to quilt them both. You would back them both with some batting and just do even half an inch apart straight lines 
on both of them and cut apart, that will prevent things from the wool from shifting and sliding as much. So that's an option for you to do as well. The other option is to use just regular fabric for your backing, which I did on this one. And I actually did like I mentioned to you. I did, I put a piece of batting behind it. I put some simple straight line quilting. And see, I've already got this one ready to go and to stuff. And so now I'm just gonna kind of show you how I stuff it. I was, when I made pin cushions a few years ago, I used to get crushed walnut shells for bird cages from the pet food store, but this time I actually found this on Amazon. And this is a ground nut shells, and it says perfect pin cushion filling. And this is an unscented, but I noticed they also had lavender scent, and they also have bigger bags. So I'm gonna show you my my not so pretty funnel, but it's a great way to stuff. I'm gonna open the bag. Okay, so I've already finished this according, and the pattern, it really does just walk you all the way through the steps, and it will show you that you're going to leave this opening about three inches when you sew the two back pieces together, and then you're going to put your back and your front right sides together, sew all the way around, trim those corners, and then turn it inside out. So I've already done that, I've already turned it inside out. And using a funnel just really, really helps. I just stick the funnel in, and I fill it up. And then you can either use your finger, you know, at first it's just gonna shake in pretty well. Once you start getting to where you have the, the filling that's kind of going above the level, then you're gonna to need to just kind of turn it like that, and get the rest of that filled. And you, it's kind of a personal preference how much filling you wanna put in. Some people like really, really filled and firm pin cushions. Some people want them a little bit flatter. When you get kind of to where you think you're getting close, you might want to use a chopstick or some kind of tool to kind of push it into the edges. I really like this little, it's called that purple thing. It's just been this kind of vintage quilting tool that's been around forever. But I like using it to kind of push my filling in and sometimes it's kind of amazing you can get a lot more than you think you can let's see I might have gone a little bit overboard here we'll see what we can get in you can kind of see how I'm also like kind of using the edge of the funnel to just kind of pack the filling and make room for more. I, Cause I really kind of do like these to be stuffed pretty well. Okay. I got all of that in. I wasn't sure I'd be able to, but I did get all of that in. When you get to the point where you're happy with it, and I think this is really, this is good. I might be able to play with it and get some more, but it, it's at a good place for me to show you the closing stitch. So I'm just gonna show you really quick. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you, I'm just gonna do a simple kind of a whip stitch on the back. I'm going to, I've got my needle already knotted. I'm gonna take it in there so that my knot gets buried inside. And I'm just gonna take a small stitch, almost like I'm binding, really. And I'm just going to stitch those together, making sure that those raw edges are tucked inside. Something else while I'm stitching this that some people will do is they will 
actually put a piece of batting right there, right before they start doing this stitching, and that will help keep the filling intact. I've had, got a few little shells that are coming out, but putting that batting there will actually hold it intact and kind of keep those little tiny pieces from strain. But I, I really do like having the opening back here. I just feel like it's always going to be on the pot bottom of the pin cushion. It's not ever going to show. And I've also seen people who will sometimes stitch a little quilt label over here, especially if you're giving it as a gift, you could put a little label there and cover up entirely your seam. But anyway, and when you're ready, what I always do is I always bury my knot when I'm done. When I'm done, I will knot my thread a couple times and then I can just bury that in the pin cushion and pull my needle way over there and that knot is under there and then I can cut my thread. Okay, so there we go. It's a cute little pin cushion. You, as I said, I could have put probably a little bit more stuffing in this one, but I, I just love kind of having a, a nice, you know, firm pin cushion. So I, I got it to the point where it was firm, but I, I don't want them bulging. I like it to kind of lay flat, sit flat on my desktop. Just a couple more things. Uh, I mentioned the batting to put over when you're stuffing. The other thing sometimes people do is they can also put batting in the corners. I don't ever see that to be a problem. I always can just kind of feel like you can just kind of squish the filling into your corners. You can embellish as desired. I wanted to show you this pin cushion that my friend Nancy made me. And actually, such a fun idea. She took the little tiny cross stitch block from the Count Your Stitches Design Mini Happy Spools pattern. And so she did half of her pin cushion with that. And then she did a plain section. But look how she embellished it with the lace and the button and the mini prairie points. Uh, she actually did just stuff this with batting, so it, it's not like a with the filling that I used. And as I mentioned before, too, she kind of did the same little technique on the back where instead of closing her pin cushion on one of the sides where she closed it on the back and she put her quilt label. And I also think you could put your quilt label, like I mentioned, over that seam. So just a few ideas. I hope that you'll just take this little free pattern and have fun sewing away. Okay, so that's it for the simple pin cushion. I hope you enjoy making one or many. Uh, there are so many options. If, uh, also, if you don't, I didn't mention this earlier, but if you don't want to fill it with a pin cushion filling like I shared, you can always just fill them with batting like the other pin cushion that I was showing you and just use it for a little bowl filler just for a little decorative thing, but this is just a great way to use scraps and to make something for yourself or for a friend. And so I hope you will enjoy this free pattern PDF. There is a link in the description where you can go to download that from my blog. There will be a button that will say to click here to download the pincushion PDF pattern. And then I'll also have linked some of the other things that I talked about during today's video. If you enjoyed the video, please share it with a friend, hit the like button, and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. Thanks so much for stopping by.